So many orchids, so many setups, so many environments, and so many ways to water them. Meanwhile, I love watering, so let's talk about all the methods of watering orchids that are suitable for all conditions, but sometimes certain methods should not be applied. And I will tell you my thoughts as to when which method works best, under which conditions, and why. Anyway, thank you for being here. Let me tell you that the easiest and funnest way for me to water my orchids is to pour water straight through, drip dry, and replace into the mask. This method is also the best way to flush orchids no matter the media or the setup. But this method is awesome for organic media because it encourages a rapid wet-dry cycle, depending on the choice of media mix in the pot. The downside of this method, however, is when it comes to fertilizing. By applying the pour-through method of watering your orchids, you are losing a lot of product. In addition to that, if your grow environment does not have plenty of airflow and your temperatures are a little too low, your humidity is a bit too high, the splashing of the water as it is poured through the pot could pose a threat to new growths. So, while pouring the water through the pot, be vigilant with where you pour to avoid any water falling on new growths. And in order to avoid the mistake in future when a new growth is starting, try to make it a habit, no matter at which stage your orchid is at, whether it's got new growths coming, no new growths, whatever is going on at the rhizome, just make it a habit to be careful while pouring the water through the pot so that oopsie moments of possibly drowning a new growth, risking rot, will not ever happen. But you can also leave an inch of water on a saucer or in a mask for the orchid to absorb over an extended period of time. This method works well if you have to leave your orchids for several days to fend for themselves. This method also protects any possible new growths at the base. It's pretty safe to just set the pot in an inch of water and let the orchid absorb everything. It is also perfect for seedlings that prefer to have access to moisture all the time, and in my case, my saucer is replaced by the semi-hydroponic reservoir with drainage holes. No saucer required, but the principle is the same. This method will also provide a higher humidity microclimate around the leaves, which is ideal also for seedlings, as well as mature orchids that prefer to have higher humidity around their leaves. Alternatively, if you're using an outer mask that provides a reservoir, as would be the case for a semi-hydroponic setup, you can use the reservoir to your advantage, as opposed to the previous method of filling a saucer. The reservoir can either be completely empty, half full or filled to capacity, either with plain water or nutrient solution. Many of my reservoirs are half full with a two finger depth, but if you're just getting used to having a reservoir with your pots, you can gauge the depth of your reservoir by aligning the pot and the outer mass, giving you a clear visual of the depth of your reservoir. Based on your conditions then and the activity of your orchid, you can opt to fill your reservoir completely as well. But if you feel the inner pot settling down onto the water level, you might want to tip out the excess in the reservoir so that the inner pot is not sat in water. Instead, let the wicking material do the work for you. Or you can go the radical route and soak the whole pot up to just below the rhizome. This method will give you time to walk away and address other chores. But very important is that you do not forget the orchids in doing so. <laughs> And there's no need to top up the pot as the water is dispersed throughout and the level drops. We're not trying to soak the whole pot for the sake of the volume of the pot. What we want to achieve is to water or fertilize the orchids by the soaking method. And seeing as all the roots will find themselves in 50% of the pot, that's plenty fine. So if you see your water recede, not a problem. There's no need to top up. Save water and save your nutrients at the same time. If your conditions permit, you can also water your orchids by spraying them from the top down. This method is ideal for dry climates with low humidity and can also be used to multitask by providing a foliar feeding to the orchids while increasing the humidity around the plant. In addition to that, it is a great way of getting aerial roots to hydrate so as to support the orchid's growth, which is a common factor with vendaceous orchids that are potted up. More often than not, the aerial roots will not find the media and in many cases they are not trainable to get them into the pot, so spraying the orchid from top to 
bottom hydrates those roots as well. Another thing that I do a lot and kind of enjoy doing is misting only the perimeter surface of the pot to allow water to get to the root system by gravity without having to actually go through the watering process with a jug. It's quick, it's easy, and on a day that you may be in a rush, the orchids will be just fine with that trickle of water that is going into a pot. Not just because sometimes it saves you a lot of time, takes care of your orchids on a busy day, busy schedule. I also find this method particularly useful when it comes to cooler temperatures, during which the orchids do not need much water, but should not completely dry out either. It also saves water, the orchids are provided for, and it adds a little more humidity to that specific pot as well. But let me just add a little something something here. Know that doing this with nutrient solution can accumulate salts at the surface of the pot if there is not enough humidity in your conditions to ensure that the orchid can absorb the little you are applying. As mentioned, ideally this method is used during the cooler months of the year and well, we should not be blasting our orchids with heavy fertilizer concentrations during that time of year either. So with a weak nutrient solution, you will not encounter salt buildup but you will provide for the basic needs of your orchid. Just keep in mind any new growth that may be starting at the base, <laughs> keep the nozzle around the outer edge of the pot. Before we move on to the options for watering mounts, would you please give this video a like? If you found this video and you are new to my channel, please subscribe. I would so appreciate the support and leave a comment so that I can welcome you and thank you for the support, for watching. And let me know if you've shared the video because I really want to express my appreciation. Thank Thank you so much. Now when it comes to mounts you also have several options because you can drop the entire mount into a tub and let it float around for as long as it takes to saturate the mount. This method is ideal for dry climates with very low humidity and can also be used to multitask by providing a foliar feed to the orchids. It will also leach out any excess salts that have accumulated on the mount itself while it soaks. There is no risk of rot because airflow with the dry environment will cancel that probability out. However, do not do this during the cooler winter months unless you can guarantee warm temperatures temperatures for the mount to dry out with plenty of airflow. I like this option for a busy lifestyle because for the duration that the mount is soaking, you can walk away and get other chores done if you so choose to do so. But keep in mind that the timing for removing the mount from the soak depends on the size of the orchid and to be 100% sure that the roots did get hydrated, you want to look at the old roots and see those green up. Do not wait for the new roots to show you signs of greening up because they may not be at that stage of their development for the velamen to be absorbing moisture. And while you are able to walk away while the mount soaks, know that it only takes 15 to 20 seconds for roots to absorb the moisture. On the other hand, for the purpose of flushing the mount and leaching salts, a longer soak will get that done. But when fertilizing, the longer the mount is soaking in nutrients, well, the mount is also soaking in the nutrient solution, not just your roots. So think about when you deem it fit to walk away, or if you can stay for the 20 second maximum when fertilizing using this method. You're trying to get fertilizer into the orchid, not trying to soak your mount and get fertilizer into the mount itself. One thing to note, however, <laughs> this method can be extremely wasteful of your water and nutrient solution because if you do not want to share water, then you will have to empty the container out. You have to sterilize it and fill it up again for your next mount or have different containers for all your mounts, which would be best practice. But if you know your orchids and you know that none are showing any signs of disease, then using the same container and nutrient solution or water, whichever it is, is absolutely absolutely no problem. Unless, of course, you see one of your orchids has a bit of a pest problem. Exclude that from the soaking method and mist it instead. But we will get to that after. I just want to mention one little important detail. If you soak your mounts in plain water as a way of flushing them from the accumulated salts, 
keep in mind that as you soak more mounts, the tannins and salts will increase as well. So be prepared to do a water change if you have a lot of mounts to have the maximum flushing results. Now, after having said all that, let's get to misting because that is a great option as well. If soaking the entire mount is not something you are comfortable with, then misting the mount to the point of saturation is the safest alternative. This will also provide a foliar feed at the same time if fertilizer or supplements are added to the water. Be sure though to provide plenty of airflow around the orchid seeing as misting the entire mount to include the leaves will cause water to get into active growing points of the orchid. This method works really well with orchids that are exposed to the elements as per their care requirements and because there they are constantly exposed to airflow. However, if you don't have the option to be this radical when misting your mount, then it is just as effective to mist the mount only around the base of the orchid where the roots are, avoiding the leaves altogether. But there is a caveat here as well, and that is be mindful of any new growth starting at the base. Be careful where you point that nozzle so as to ensure the continued growth of the new growth and avoid any risk of rot. Top tip, use the time you spend misting each mount to multitask by inspecting the orchid. Check to see if there's anything going on that needs your attention, especially pests. They can hide anywhere. I call my misting sessions inspection sessions. <laughs> now, bare root orchids that are in baskets with only limited amounts of media to serve as water retention and a humidity buffer can also be misted from top to bottom, conditions permitting. However, if you're not sure and feel uncomfortable with that approach, then target the lower third of the basket because roots are in that area and they will provide for the orchid. And if you have aerial roots dangling out, miss those and avoid avoid the entire leaf and rhizome structures altogether. Just like the soaking method with a pot, we did not need to top up the pot just because the water drained into the mass and the pot is only 50 to 60% full. That is where the roots are anyway. So eliminate the risk of any potential rot by targeting the lower third of the basket. And I hope that this gave you some pointers that will make your watering regime more effective, possibly a little bit more tailor-made for each individual orchid based on what it's doing, where it's living, your conditions, possibly also less wasteful when it comes to products and letting it just wash out through the pot. But above all, I hope that this video also gave you some ideas so that your watering regime with your orchids or the fertilizer regime is always going to stay fun and something that you enjoy doing. I have other videos that target the topic of flushing and fertilizing. If you would like to dig deeper into the topic, some of those I will link in the description. So have yourself a little mosey into that part of this upload and any questions you have or additional suggestions that you would like to contribute to the community please go a little bit lower than the description and add those in the comment section thank you so much for watching i wish you a fabulous day on the condition that you stay safe please take care bye